Welcome on back everybody to the channel. For this video, we're going to be going over the 621 balance update notes that will be releasing tomorrow. Within these notes, we have a bunch of buffs, a bunch of nerfs, and a couple of adjustments, even though we have a bunch of characters in the adjustment list. Now, I have already reviewed and looked over this, and personally, <sighs> I don't know why the devs are making the decisions that they are. Um, it genuinely makes no sense to the people that actually play the game. So I don't know where they're getting their data from, who they're taking their, like, their data from, and just genuinely what is, uh, what is motivating these executive decisions to make these changes to these characters so we're going to be blowing through it and just man <laughs> all right so first up about molly this is regarding her ultimate ability so the base damage of her ultimate is going to get a 200 damage increase do i feel as though she needed this no because she has an ability to where every 10 percent uh hp that she loses that 10 percent actually gets distributed to her ultimate therefore she does more ultimate damage already so to the max 90 percent that molly can already do with her ultimate giving that ability, now she's getting a 200, per, uh, 200 damage buff on top of this. So, given that she already gets her ultimate back extremely fast when you do successfully counter somebody, I don't feel as though she needs to do more damage. Molly was perfect the way she was. The initial nerf that she got with the uh, the infinite reset type of thing, that was fine. It didn't really affect her too much really at all. She was still an amazing character, still extremely basic, and pretty much Molly is just a character to where the more you know the roster itself, the better you're going to perform with Molly. Uh, she's really just a solid fundamental character, even though she can be played brain dead when people decide to use rare ability but i digress the main point of this is that she didn't need this buff continuing on we have rapunzel rapunzel gets a buff when it comes to the time that the opponent is affected with the ultimate hit effect so it ends up getting a two second increase why did they do this i have no no clue at all no clue at all but anywho then robbie one of these changes were fine given that now Ravi has an increase in movement speed. So when his ultimate um, is available, his movement speed is increased by 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So he gets a 3% movement speed buff come the next patch. When it comes to unseal, I do not feel as though he needed this. It went from a 0.8 to now a whole second. So he's going to end up getting a 0.2 second buff come the next patch. So pretty much when he hits you with a skill into his autos, he's going to have his skill back. And I just hope that with this ability that Ravi players actually learn how to push and how to be aggressive since Ravi players have known to be passive since the beginning of time next up we have witch queen this is probably the one that i'm looking forward to the most given that we've all known how witch queen's uh ultimate ability works but now her new ultimate ability is that they're going to turn into giant frogs instead of the small frogs and trying to hit them they're going to be giant frogs and they're going to be taking double the damage so instead of 30 35 40 45 50 percent now it's going to be 60 70 80 90 and 100 percent additional damage to these frogs not a lot of people play witch queen witch queen doesn't get a lot of love she's not a bad character but she's also not top tier in which case a lot of people in this game excuse my language are tier whores so it's going to be interesting to see which players actually choose witch queen to utilize this wicked curse ability up next we have yong yong uh this was probably the most reasonable uh buff in this entire list so with uh, Beep Boop, his con directional control is going to end up getting an increase. So now increases directional control by 51, 57, 63, 69, 75%. So this is 
exceptionally better than what it was before being the 34 38 42 46 50 percent so now when he's rolling around he's he's going to be able to turn a lot tighter turns which is really good for him then we have one more time before it decreases ultimate cooldown by 22 24 26 28 30 percent when hitting two or more opponents with the uh, ultimate ability but since this was actually hard to utilize now they did it to where each opponent hit by your ultimate abilities finisher attack restores 17 19 21 23 25 percent of ultimate cooldown so now if you end up hitting all three you're actually going to be getting 75 percent of your ultimate back which is really really good allowing yong yong to use his ultimate ability a whole lot more frequently so again this is another character that doesn't really get any love he's not a bad character but also he's not on the list of being a top tier character so it's going to be really interesting to see which people actually want to utilize yong yong and give him the love that he deserves with these buffs moving on we have kudenai uh this he didn't get a damage buff however the rework to how this is is pretty interesting so before smashing or knocking two opponents off the map without getting smashed awakens kudenai increases movement speed by four percent and the follow-up speed for some of his attacks and decreases gauge charge required for ultimate by 19 21 23 25 27 percent this way getting effects last until kudenai is smashed so um the decrease gauge charge required doesn't change that's actually going to stay the same come the uh the after in which case once the patch comes but what ends up changing is this part right here this awakening i mean not this awakening so smashing or knocking two opponents off the map awakens kudenai so what this means is that now you don't have to smash two opponents or knock them off the map in one life now you can smash one opponent you can get smashed like three five ten times and then the next opponent that you smash then you're awakened once you get two smashes in general you're going to end up getting awakened so now the play for kudenai is that if you can get a smash um but you're very low health it'll be better to reset that way the next time you come back and then you get your smash then you're going to end up becoming awakened with full hp and that way you guys can you know get in the groove of having that movement speed and also that attack speed along with the decreased gauge charge uh, required so that was a really really nice change for kudenai it's going to be a lot easier to go into his awakening now all right so here is where i start getting a little bit confused so if you guys know exactly what this means um in the comment section below please explain it because this r whoosh is going over my head uh both of these before and after are the exact same the only difference is that now it is fixed damage versus uh base damage and i don't know what that means so that's the change for alice and then also a couple of people coming up all right so when it comes to ducky and ducky's transformation heal the transformation heal was amazing because you could be going ham as ducky get dropped down to around 55 percent health and then use transformation heal in order to get all of your health back that way it genuinely felt like you were playing as a fresh new character being swan starting off with full hp and being able to go ham with then swan so before it was restores 24 28 32 36 40 percent hp when transforming and it looks like this ability took a tank in a nerf uh, as we see after restore 17 19 21 23 25 percent of max hp when transforming now mind you this is the percentage of max hp being how much hp you have overall so it is going to be a fixed amount we don't know how much that's actually going to be unless you go to ducky look at her max health when she's level 10 and then see how much she's actually going to be get back at the transformation heal and this is going to allow you to know and how to gauge uh when you want to use the transformation heal so that you can actually calculate okay i'm at this amount of health when i use it now i'm still going to get max hp so now you have to be a little bit more tactical with it and i feel as though this is this is a fairly decent change you know if she ends up uh getting less health than what she did before that's fine because she got a lot she got a lot of health anyway when using transformation heal so i don't think that this is going to affect ducky too much all right so now for heroic cry 
this one was another amazing 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 buff that they did not miss and they need to be consistent and do more buffs that are reasonable like this so before when transforming allies near swan gain 10 percent movement speed and 10 percent damage to all attacks for six seven eight nine ten seconds those seconds aren't going to change and it's going to transfer over come the patch being in the after that we're about to read right now but when transforming all allies on the map gain 10% movement speed and 10% damage to all attacks. This is amazing because now you do not have to be near Swan when she's transforming and Ducky can be anywhere on the map. So that is amazing, man. This buff, bravo, round of applause, pat on the back. Coming in next, we have Flare. Uh, this is the one to where we have yes it's the same exact thing just as alice to where previously um they did damage but now it's going to be fixed damage so it's going from aoe damage to now fixed aoe damage again if you guys know what exactly this means i'm not too familiar with damage versus fixed damage let me know in the comment section below and uh that way we can all learn what exactly this means all right so goldie before uh decreases gauge charge required for ultimate by 16 18 20 uh 22 and 24 percent in which case it's going to get a four percent nerf when it comes to using the ability don't you just hate boredom i don't feel as though this is going to affect her too much i don't know why they nerfed goldie she was fine the way she was but again i don't know where they're getting their data from who's making these decisions and who thinks they are good decisions but you know whatever we got it Next up, we have Tantrum. Basic attack damage increased by 24, 27, 30, 33, 36%. And that's going to be the same once we read the after uh, when both ultimate and skill are not available. However, although we didn't need the nerf to Don't You Just Hate Boredom, the buff to Tantrum was amazing. This is another ability to where they just didn't miss. More patches like this, please. With Yong Yong, Witch Queen, and also with Swan. More changes like this that are actually reasonable. So after basic attack damage increased by 24, 27, 30, 33, 36%, as I said, it hasn't changed from the before to after, but when skill is not available. So now you can run around with ultimate and still have that 36% max base damage increase uh, when it comes to her basic attack damage as long as your skill isn't available in which case is reasonable because a lot of her openings comes from using her skill first into her auto attack so this is amazing i love this and it's just awesome that now we get to see tantrum be used a lot more frequently since once we do get that ultimate you're never going to see the benefits of tantrum until you use your ultimate and you have to use your skill all right so now we have jacko in which case jacko got both a nerf and a buff uh with surprise pretty much the tldr is that he could slide just like master cat if you use your skill into your ultimate then he could slide forward and end up hitting you with the ultimate but he could also do it with his auto attack as well so what they ended up doing was that decreased the amount of sliding caused by forward momentum when using his ultimate this means that he can still slide but he's not going to be sliding as far so is this really a nerf i don't know we have to see how much the slide was deducted uh from his previous version and if we're still able to actually or actually if we're now able to react to it and sidestep it if we're not able to then this really is not a nerf um, he's still going to end up doing it and it's still going to be a problem now we're going to go into the buffs for whatever reason I don't know why they decide to buff Jacko Again, I don't know who's making these decisions, why they're making these decisions, and who thinks it's it a good idea. Why? So, overcharge, increased damage of all attacks by 16, 18, 20, 22, 24%, in which case it's going to be the same for 6 seconds when ultimate is available. But now, it's going to increase for 9 seconds. Why the 3 second buff? I have no clue. Does Jacko need any buffs? No, he needs to get nerfed. Now, 
Dare to Capture Me. Dare to Capture Me was designed to help Jack go reposition after using his ultimate. In its current state, however, it does little to help him uh, quickly reposition. Ability has been tweaked to better carry out its intended purpose. That's all nice and dandy, but you have nobody talking about Jack O like this. You have nobody complaining. Oh my gosh, man, I wish I had more ability. I mean, more mobility once I use my ultimate because I can't escape the current situation. You have no one talking like that. So we have before increases movement speed by 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 percent for the fixed amount from two to three seconds after using his ultimate ability. But now he gets 30, 35, 40, 45. 50% for one second using uh, after using the ultimate ability. So although that nerf happened from the two to three seconds to now one second, he got a substantially much higher movement speed increase. Why did they make this change? I have no clue. You have nobody talking about this, but you know, I digress. Now, Kaiser, obviously the best character in the game, the most busted character in the game, the character that can one-shot anybody and the character that just never gets smashed. Kaiser is an issue. He's more broken than Master Cat. He, okay, I'm going to stop the cap. So, heavy blow. Before, ground skill pushes upon his back by 20, 22, 24, 26, 28%. Um, but now, after... Of course, it gets a nerf. Why are they nerfing Kaiser? I don't know. They literally just got done buffing Jacko. They end up buffing Wolfgang. They end up buffing Red. Why are you nerfing Kaiser? Why are you touching this man? Buff him. Because obviously, the muscles that he has are fake. Buff this man. Please, dude. Why are you nerfing him? Then, we have Tenacious Spirit. This one is a buff, so thank you. This one is actually good. But unfortunately, nobody uses this ability at all. You maybe have a couple of, you know, apples that uh, apples in the basket that use it for Dom. But for duels, BR, nobody uses it at all. For Dom, it's a lot more acceptable. Uh, anyway. Receiving 10 hits increases your movement speed by 12%, 16%, 20%, 24, 28 uh, for 10 seconds and decreases damage from opponents by 12, 16, 20, 24, and 28%. Excuse me, I had to yawn. So, all the percentages end up carrying over to the after. The only change is that now is going to be from 10 seconds to now 15 seconds. So that's great and all, but still, why is Kaiser receiving any type of nerfs is beyond me. Now we have Nui, so spreading warmth. This one is a buff and I greatly appreciate this one. So before, increases the movement speed of you and your allies by 12, 14, 16, 18, 20%, in which case it's still going to be the same come the patch, uh, but it was for three seconds when now the buff that she got is going to be for five seconds. That is amazing because the movement speed ability on Nui is extremely fun, but unfortunately it would run out shortly after you would actually run off of her skill. So now you're able to run off of it and actually retouch it a whole lot better in order to get that additional five seconds to continue running faster from this ability. Next up we have Sunrise, decreases skill cooldown by 0 0.13, 0 0.2, 0 0.27, 0 0.34, 0 0.4 seconds for every successful basic attack against an opponent. But now this is ended, this is gonna end up getting buffed, which is amazing for Dom. So now it's going to be uh, by 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.4, 0.45, and 0.5 seconds. So now we're going to be able to see Sunrise a whole lot more. And it's going to be actually pretty interesting if you combine Sunrise with Spreading Warmth because if you're going to be able to put down the skill a whole lot more often, that means that you're going to be able to run around faster a whole lot more often. But typically, people go for the damage when it comes to Nui. But I feel as though Spreading Warmth and also Sunrise would be a pretty interesting and cool combination for Dominion. Lastly for Nui, we have Daybreak Energy. Ultimate's damage and gauge required had both been greatly enhanced. Ultimate ability has been toned down slightly. So before, decreases gauge charge required for ultimate by 4, 8, 12, 16, 20% and fires two additional rays of light forward. Now, decreases gauge required for ultimate by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10% and fires two additional rays of light forward. So this was a slight nerf, but I feel as though it's fine. Nui is still going to be great. So Octavia is another legend to where we have the base heal versus fixed heal. Again, no clue what this means, so somebody 
please explain the difference because I have no clue. And Peter. Peter is another one. So the damage from um, his Earth Roaring Sword is going to go from 200, 250, 300, 350 to 400 uh, to now 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 fixed damage. All right, so next up we have uh, Rambert. Cluster Shot. Rambert's Cluster Shot would send opponents flying away further. Uh, I mean farther away the lower their HP was knockback has been reduced to keep this effect in check yes when your HP was low you would go flying as if you got hit with a Peter skill but now when hitting the closest opponent knockback scaling based on target HP has been decreased so I feel as though that's fine he's still gonna be knocking back people but it's not gonna be no Peter skill all right, so now we have charging ram, in which case the uh, percentages are going to end up getting a nerf. So increased damage of all attacks by 32, 36, 40, uh, 44, 48 percent for eight seconds when hitting an opponent with ground skill. But now it's going to be by 24, 28, 32, 36, 40 percent for eight seconds when hitting an opponent with the ground skill. Next up, we have unrelenting attack before decreases skill cooldown by 24, 26, uh, 28. 30 32 percent when hitting an opponent with the aerial skill and that's going to end up getting a buff so now it's going to be 30 35 50 i mean 30 35 40 45 and 50 percent when hitting an opponent with the aerial skill so that's going to be end up pretty good for him for people that want to play rambert like a cindy or like a yong yong and they want to go for more uh air skills for whatever reason they just want to prove to people that they can be a melee character with rambert and that they don't rely on their shotgun Next up, we have Cluster Bombs. Before, it was just base damage, and this is another instance of fixed damage. So it's going from 200, 300, 400 to now 200, 250, 300, 350 to now 400 fixed damage. Following that, we have Red. As I said, she ended up getting buffed for whatever reason. She got a buff and also a nerf, but the buff was that it's going to go from 12 seconds to 20 seconds, um, being how long she's going to have that increased damage after smashing an opponent so red already does a crap ton of damage but now <laughs> she's going to be hanging on to that damage buff a whole lot longer now when it comes to invisible shadow the movement speed ended up getting decreased from 28 31 34 37 40 percent to now 18 21 24 27 30 percent red was already a fast character this ability made her move like sonic so now she's going to be pretty much moving like knuckles in which case knuckles still moves fast but he's not sonic all right so now we have robin robin ended up getting uh now this is a proper adjustment uh ground skill does piercing damage increases skill damage by 12 13 14 15 and 16 percent in which case we see the adjustment here uh by 8 10 12 14 but now the end result is always going to be 16 percent so you can see this as a nerf, but I more so see it as an adjustment because in the end, the end result is still going to be the same. You just have to work to get to that point. You're not going to be rewarded as much uh, just for having the base ability. Next up, we have the etiquette measures. Decrease the movement speed of opponents hit by the ultimate ability by 12, 14, 16, 18, 20% for three seconds. And we're going to end up seeing a buff in the percentages by 17, 19, 21, 23, and 25%. Moving along, we have imminent deadline, in which case increases damage of all attacks by 5, 6, 7, 8, 9%. With each successful attack against an opponent, stacks up to 25, 30, 35, 40, and 40%. Each stack lasts for 6 seconds and the duration resets with each successful hit. So the way that this ability works is all going to stay the same, but just as we saw with um, the swift reporting, we're going to see a nerf in the percentages themselves and the end result actually won't stay the same here. So now uh, each attack that you land is going to increase the damage of his overall attacks um, by four, five, six, seven, eight from five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then also it stacks up to 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40%. So he ends up losing 5% of that. All right, so looking at snow, Increases next skill damage by 34, 38, 42, 46, 50 percent after using your ultimate ability, and there was no timer on this. But now increases next skill damage by the same exact amount of percentages as before, but now for only five seconds after using your ultimate ability. So after you use your ultimate ability, you're going to have to use your skill. You're not able to just use your ultimate ability and hang on to the Blitz Blade buff for as long as you want, and then hit somebody with a skill. Now you actually have to 
use it within the five seconds that is going to be activated. Wolfgang makes you genuinely question who is making these executive decisions. So we're starting off okay, right? We're starting off okay. Ultimate ability deals 50, 40, uh, 54, 58, 62, 66 percent additional damage to opponents with 50 percent HP or below, right? Okay, that's cool. So that's going to end up getting a nerf to 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 percent because they their excuse is that we wanted to make Wolfgang a little bit less oppressive. They wanted to make him less oppressive, right? But then they end up doing this. Appetizing Prey. Before, ultimate ability. Restores 12, 14, 16, 18, 20% additional HP. But now it's 16, 18, 20, 22, 24% additional HP. So if he ends up using his ultimate ability and smashing you, he's going to get even more health. He already got health. A whole lot of it but now he's going to get even more then check this out no more hide and seek increases basic attack damage by 16 18 20 22 24 percent but let's scroll up wolfgang's ability was powerful and and opportunities to make use of them were plentiful ability has been nerfed to make it not as oppressive to deal with that was for track blood what about no more hide and seek you did that to track blood but what about no more hide and seek you literally made a change to make him less oppressive to deal with but then you buff an ability to make him more oppressive to deal with bro the percentages increase 28 31 34 37 40 percent for five seconds upon hitting an opponent with skill now why in the seven nations of the library world would you make this when you uh, <sighs> all right so also claw sharpening you again with track blood you made an adjustment to make him not as oppressive followed by buffs that makes him more oppressive so before decreases skill cooldown by 0 0.13 0 0.15 0 0.16 0 0.18 0 0.2 seconds but now it's 0 0.24 0 0.28 0 0.32 0 0.36 0 0.4 for every successful basic attack against an opponent which means that he's going to be getting his skill back a whole lot faster than what he did before why i have no clue i thought that we were trying to make wolfgang less oppressive you might as well have buff track blood because you buff the other things that made him more oppressive uh, uh. so then we have beast of the full moon beast of the full moon which made wolfgang stronger the more he defeated opponents nerfed to make it less strong at its strongest so each opponent smash increases damage of all attacks by 12 14 16 18 20 percent this effect stacks up to 60 70 80 90 percent and also 100 percent and lasts until wolfgang is smashed so we're going to end up seeing the nerf to 8 9 10 11 12 percent to now 40 45 50 55 60 percent so it ends up getting deducted by 20 percent there and also when we see the 8 9 10 11 12 uh 12 was the base that you started off with um before but now 12 is the max that you're gonna get um coming after and at the end level of maxing out this ability uh before it was 100 but now it's going to be 60 percent seeing a 40 percent uh, tank which is really good because made wolf gang less oppressive why bro that makes no sense you're going to make a change up here to make him less oppressive but then bro why of appetizing prey no more hide and seek and claw sharpening all received a buff why all right so now we're looking at zapetta maximum output the ultimate gauge increased um 60 to 650 so now she's not going to be getting her ultimate as frequently as she did before moving on we have all preparations are set careful use of the ability will allow zapetta to make better use of the movement speed increase so before increased movement speed by 8 9 10 11 12 percent when ultimate is available and that's going to end up getting increased to 12 14 16 18 and 20 percent when the ultimate is available so now we're going to go into the nerfs cindy had amazing staying power thanks to her recovery strike the recovery amount has been reduced to make it less optimal in more situations each opponent hit by your ultimate abilities finisher attacks restores 12 13 14 15 16 
uh, 14, 15, 16 percent of your max HP, but now it's going to be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 percent of your max HP. Is that a big change? Not really. So that's fine. I still don't understand the decision that they're making that they decided to nerf Cindy, but then they're going to give Wolfgang more HP reward for killing people with his ultimate ability. But you know, executive decision. All right, so Master Cat. Damage of all attacks depending on the ultimate resource stack increased by 8, 9, 10, 11, 12%. Um, and then that formula goes along as you increase the uh, the abilities level. But now that's going to end up getting nerfed to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10%. And you can see how the percentages change uh, depending on what level the ability is. All right, so next up we have Wukong Expand. Wukong had a very short ultimate gauge, which allowed him to use his powerful ultimate very often. His ultimate gauge has been increased to make him less able to use his ultimate as often. Ultimate, engage in, uh, ultimate gauge increased from 500 to 750. Now, why do this to Wukong? And he's Wukong. But again, we have Red and Wolfgang getting buffed. We have Jacko getting buffed. What? Bro, they... They have made some good decisions. But the vast majority of the decisions that they're making is that they're taking the non-tier whore characters and nerfing them. And they're taking the tier whore characters and buffing them. When it should be the complete opposite. But you know, again executive decisions all right so for dope clip increased damage of all attacks by 12 14 16 18 and 20 percent when ultimate is available so we're going to end up seeing a buff here in the percentages as we see 16 18 20 22 and 24 percent moving along we have behold the great sage heavens equal wukong's ultimate ability would disappear if not reset within the short time frame the duration has been lengthened so players wouldn't feel as rushed to refresh the duration before increases damage of all attacks by 20 23 26 29 32 percent for 40 seconds when game starts smashing an opponent while the effect is active will refresh the duration now increase the damage of all attacks by 20 23 26 29 32 percent for 60 seconds when game starts smashing an opponent while the effect is active will refresh the duration duration so instead of the 40 seconds now you have an entire minute you have a whole minute to get your damage in to go ahead and get a smash if you cannot get a smash within one minute of playing the match you do not need to have this ability on and you're better off utilizing the other abilities that he has available but for the people that are able to get a smash within the minute then you're going to always have the base damage increase of all of your attacks um, if you haven't maxed it out is going to be the 32 percent and you're always going to have this 32 percent damage buff in which case this damage buff is actually pretty nutty i uh, just the base <laughs> ground skill air auto into ultimate does a, a whole lot of damage so if you're able to utilize again getting a smash within the minute now that he has available then you're going to be fine and you're going to love this buff that wukong got then we have a couple of bug fixes. The bug fixes being fixed an issue where um, Molly would move in and uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> fix an issue where she would move in an abnormal way if you were repeatedly if you were to repeatedly press the ultimate button after using her ultimate and then the next one fix an issue where her ultimate would activate even against attacks that didn't deal any damage in which case I, I what attack is there that doesn't deal damage? Um hmm i i don't I, I don't even know where this bug would happen but i guess it, I, obviously it was a bug then we have could and i fix an issue where his ultimate would cause abnormal knockback so i'm happy about that because i would get so confused as to why again i'm getting sent further than a peter ground skill with could and i's ultimate I was thinking that maybe it was because the additional uh, shuriken ability. Um, I know that when you're at a specific low HP threshold, you can sit knocked back further. But as interesting to see that it was actually a bug. All right, so that's going to wrap up the entire patch notes covered. And as is going to be coming tomorrow, the 21st, 
Another thing that comes to 21st is Fall Guys. So just throwing that in there because I'm going to be playing that and see how you guys enjoy it. Anyway, tell me what you guys think of these buffs, these adjustments, and these nerfs. Comment in the comment section below. Join up in the Discord server. It's in the description below. And also have a conversation with us again, letting us know what you guys think about these balance changes. Anywho, hope you guys take care. This is Matsu, and I will see you all around.